Evo is like the biggest tournament for fighting games in general, all fighting games actually, in the world. When you're playing casuals against someone, um, you're learning, but it, you don't have that pressure from the tournament on you when you play. Like, that's a whole different um, ballpark right there. There's so many players. You know you only have two shots. If you lose once, you get sent to the loser's bracket. It's so hard to be in there, and then if you lose again, you're, you're out. So just, just knowing that is just so tough to deal with. Everyone's hometown has its own list of pluses and minuses. I think it's safe to say that there hasn't been a lot of professional gamers coming out of South Central LA. But in competitive Street Fighter, the US as a whole is at a big disadvantage. There are huge distances between the country's best players, and unlike Japan, the connection quality just isn't reliable enough to play each other online. So when you told your mom or when she realized that this is what you wanted to do, you mm -hmm. wanted to be a professional player, how did, how, <laughs> this is a, parents, how did she react to that? This is an interesting question because my mom is actually an extremely personal person. She did not like it at first. You know, she thought it was just a waste of time. And then one day she sat down and watched me play and she was like, wow, 70 games in a row, that's a lot. <laughs> you know? And regardless if you know video games or not, you know that 70 wins in a row is a lot. The console era changed Street Fighter, man. It changed every game. No more dropping tokens in the arcades anymore. Back in 1992, 200 bucks bought you a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo. 30 million Sega Genesis and 49 million Super Nintendos were sold worldwide. By 1995, 8 million Street Fighter players were thinking they were the baddest on the block. The biggest challenge was to play on another peripheral, right? To play on another version of the same game. And the ports back then weren't as equal as the arcade version. And then I went to venues with the console era. People were kind of like, okay, maybe this is more convenient. The graphics are just right there. So today, you can bring a lot more systems to an event versus having two arcade games and having a 100-man tournament. This is unreal. Last year, there were over 30 major Street Fighter tournaments worldwide. But when it comes to tournaments, there's few bigger than this. Okay, it's rolling on one, two, and sound. The first day of Street Fighter at EVO is always my favorite day in fighting games each year because um, 2,200 or 2,000, whatever it is, people show up and almost all of them lose. There are just too many good players. It's, it's impossible to predict who's going to end up in top eight. My mind was a database at EVO. Every single match I progressed through, I just went through that database in my head. And I'm like, OK, this is what I need to do against this character. This character is a bad matchup for me, but I still know how to beat this guy. Snake Eyes trying to get in. What? Oh, what? He backed us! What? He backed us! And then, you know, certain matchups that were bad for Zengi, instead of playing the matchup, I play against the player. The relationship between player and character is all about how you like to play. Some people like to play making a lot of risks and, and taking a lot of, of guesses. Uh, some people like to play much more conservatively. And I often find that that's how the person is in life. In Street Fighter, you can really find the character that matches that. In The Art of War, Sun Tzu wrote, the warrior should be as fast as the wind, as quiet as the forest, as daring as fire, and immovable as the mountain. The four kanji on Ryu's belt, and the way he humbly roams the globe, mastering the fighting arts, embodies these ideals. But evil Ryu, with the flaming red hair, 
those crazy eyes, and the hole burnt through his chest. He's the exact opposite of Ryu. Within Street Fighter lore, the character of Evil Ryu is focused on one thing, fighting to prove that he's the strongest. その Daigo's very, he's very adaptive. Like, he won't just sit there and, you know, let you do the same thing against him. You have to think a lot and optimize on what you want to do against him. One of these guys has to go home, unfortunately. One of these this guys match. is not making top eight. Giving him those EX green hand punishes, but he's running out of life. Oh, oh here's, here's the opportunity. Oh, oh. heartbreaking jab. Such patience from Snake Eyes. Finds the short again, twice. Oh, oh good job. Oh, good job by Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes staying alive. And now Defang on the meter front. Good jump. Oh, he wanted Daigo to oh, jump. No. That should do it right there. Daigo Umahara has eliminated Snake Eyes from the tournament. When I lose to other people, it feels like I could have won. But when I lose to Daigo, it feels like he's been studying it right before he played me. Six, five, four, three. Because some of the things I'm doing, I'm like, there's no way he should know how to get around this. Absolutely no way. Two, one, zero, game over. To beat the best, Snake Eyes is gonna have to stop being a Zangief player and start being a Street Fighter player. Across the Pacific, they say stuff like, a player capable of competing with any character is a competitor capable of beating any opponent. Well, here in the States, we say to beat the best, you have to train against the best. And in Street Fighter, that means traveling to Japan. <laughs>